Uh, Day you one. See that? Uh, I don't. I'm not going to do that because <laughs> that might give away some stuff. Um, <clears throat> well, it is. Um, I think it's probably. It's fair to say. Uh, so far, this is this is the first season that I've worked on that I that me that I have worked outside of of uh, Northern Ireland, which 80% of the filming takes place. So it was really nice to get away from the rain and the cold <laughs> um, for a change, and it was beautiful weather when we were here, so it was, it was really cool. Um, the one unusual aspect I suppose I can't talk about with is the Spanish fans. <laughs> I, oh my God. We're I, interested. Yeah, I have never experienced the level of interest in anything um, that I've been involved in as I have the, the passion of the fans in Spain. And that may sound like, oh yeah, he's in Spain, he's just saying that. He says that in every country. No, <laughs> this is definitely very, very different here. Um, it was uh, extraordinary to see the, the, the level of interest and, and uh, as I said, the passion uh, from, from the fans. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's quite overwhelming because I've been acting for whatever, 25, 27 years. And it's the first time that's, that's going to happen. So it's, a, it's very strange. I feel like I'm in uh, one direction. It's, it's very weird. Um, and, uh, but but it, it, it warms the heart because of, because of the level of interest. So that was really cool. Oh, no, I get that. But the, the, the thing is, I mean, some of this, we, we did get a little bit annoyed because uh, people were live streaming while we were working. There was drones, there was uh, all sorts of things uh, happening, which is... Uh, and one of the beautiful things about the show, um, I think some of the media, are, uh, uh, the vast majority of the media are very kind to us, and, um, but some of the media, uh, I, I felt was, it was... Um, uh, a little bit mean spirited because they were they were spoiled they, they were literally spoiling that one of the one of the gorgeous things about this show one of the things that I love about it are the surprises and um, you've only to look at the reactions to the red wedding when nobody knew that was coming and the purple wedding and, the, and, and Ned Stark's execution and all sorts of stuff I mean th th those are the moments that that are amazing as a viewer if you watch because you don't expect them, you're completely taken aback and it's one of the most wonderful things. And for people to put that, and it's not just the Spanish, I mean, you know, some of the, some of the, um, the other um, European publications uh, that, that were, were, were showing people together and, and I thought that, that was, it's, it's, I think it's, it's, they just want the story and they don't care about, about the people who love the show and I, I just thought that was a little bit, it was a little bit mean spirit. But I suppose they've got a job to do, and they uh, they care more about ratings than they do about enjoyment. But that's you know what do you do? Free free country, as they say. But you, you kind of look. You you always look when you're looking at the show. You always kind of say, oh, you know, you see a wonderful scene, uh, beautifully acted. And you kind of go, oh man, I wish I'd have done that because the writing is so good on this. But <clears throat> I must admit, for the three or four seasons. I'm actually probably close to the three. Um, Tywin Lannister, which was Charles Dance, um, you know, the Tyrion's uh, and Cersei and Jamie's father. I, I must admit, I am a big, big fan of Charles Dance anyway, but I just thought he played it just so good. He was completely perfect. He was an extraordinary worker. <clears throat> and I, what I, the other thing I like about it, in reference to that, is that there are there are no stars. The star of our show is the show, is the story. It's this wonderful canvas of this extraordinary fantasy world. And, and I think if they, if they would have had uh, very famous movie stars in it, um, it would have unbalanced the show. It would have made it more difficult to, to, to immerse yourself in it, to lose yourself. So, so I think it's, it, it's brilliantly cast. Nina Gold and Robert uh, have done a um, a remarkable job of casting this. They've used people who, uh, to a large extent, their their uh, history is theatre, so they're used to long scenes and and, and dramatic stuff. And uh, they, there's, there's there's as I said, there's no movie stars in the show, just actors, uh, and that's kind of it's really cool. It's really good.
No, I don't think so. Um, it, it was. I mean, it, it was always going to happen. Uh, that we were. I mean, from the from the get go, because I think he started more than twenty years ago writing the books. Um, and and obviously, what we we have to condense these huge uh, books um, with the with, with the with the portions of it that are visual, um, as well as the drama and the interaction with the characters. Um, what actually happened when we were overtaking the books, I don't know if you know this, David and Dan went to uh, the guys who produced the show and write the, the vast majority of it. They went to um, uh, Santa Fe in New Mexico where George lives and they basically stayed there for a week and he rolled out the story. Um, so, uh, so they know exactly what's coming or the main points. Um, and George still has, he's, I think he's almost finished the sixth book. And he should have, he's in a lot of trouble because he was supposed to get it out last year and he didn't. So, and then, then he's to start the last book. So, <coughs> I have no idea when, this, when the sixth book is, is, is going to be published. Uh, but I, I think they're two, they're two different experiences. It's, it's you know, there's usually, uh, there's a lot of people who love the books who say, oh, the show is nowhere, you know, the TV or the movie, whatever it may be, it's nowhere near as it's, it's good as the books. But I think, in, in, in particularly in our show, the, Dave and Dan are such huge fans of the books. They, they, they have to be. They've lived with them for 10 years. Um, they've moved their lives uh, to complete this story of television. So they, there's nobody on the planet more, more you know, have... have, have not only sacrificed but gained <laughs> from these beautiful stories that died and Dan. Um, so there's a huge amount of respect uh, from the people who love the books because they 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 see David and Dan as as fellow lovers of the book and are doing their absolute best to be honourable to, to uh, George or Martin's work. And I, I think that's a that's I think it shows it shows on the screen. Uh, Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah. I think they're, um, and especially because the characters kind of got bigger and bigger as, as the show has gone on, um, which I'm obviously very happy about too. Um, yes, there's, it's, it's. Um, I, I do have uh, a couple of sneaky friends who, will, as we're out having a drink, they go. So, so there's the, tell us about those scenes you were doing, in, in, uh, and I go, nah, you need to try harder than that. So they do, they try to squeeze some information out of you, quite cleverly some of them. I get annoyed with them sometimes when they're, when they're trying, to, uh, trying to do that. But then again, we try to get David and Dan drunk as well and try and get stuff out of them. But they're experts, you can't get anything out of David and Dan. But it's fun trying. <laughs> Did you ever spoil anything by mistake? Uh, absolutely not. No, 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 no. no. We're well trained. They take, the, they take us to Langley in Virginia. We get CIA training before we, before we do the press jumpers. And they beat us with sticks and all so we want to beat. And waterboarding as well? Oh, absolutely. Love that waterboarding. Uh, I'm sorry I can't answer that question. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. I tried. <laughs> okay. She's a wonderful actress. That, that girl just that was so cool. Like the first day that we came in when she came in uh, last season. I think, was that the season before? I can't remember, they run into one. And I remember the first day that, that we filmed together when we were rehearsing together, and myself, Kit, and uh, Sophie, uh, when we're asking for, for the men, and she says, we'll give you 64 men, which is a great moment. Like, and, uh, but when we, when we sat with her, and we, did, uh, we came in the day before with the director, before we filmed, to give her a little chance, because she's very young. And we, we walked in, the three of us were there with, with our little uh, sides, our pieces of paper for, you know, even writing our lines for the following day. And she was sitting behind the table. You've seen this scene. And uh, sitting behind the table and uh, she was just like, perfect, no book, no nothing. Um, we just looked at each other and went, she's making us look like amateurs. She was so good. And she's, she's absolutely brilliant. She's a, She's a joy to work with, and a really lovely girl as well. I, I, I don't know how they do it, but they produce these magnificent actors and young people in front of us, and they're really lovely as well. Well, there's a couple of people who have asked me how I'd like to die. Which, <laughs> that's a bit presumptuous. Maybe I won't die. 
Well, when, I, when they've asked me how I'd like to die, I, my, my standard answer is of old age. Um, so I, uh, there's, there's some, we, we spend time, but we're sitting waiting on cameras to move, we sit down and go, okay, what do you think's going to happen? And we do, we, we have those conversations <coughs> that people have on their sofa at home. We have those conversations on set in costume, <laughs> which is very strange. Um, and uh, we have, there's all sorts of theories. Um, and you find out very quickly who the, uh, who the, 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 the actors who are the most insane uh, when they start speculating and you look at them going, where are your mind? How could it be that? And, uh, and you come up with your reasons and stuff. But we, we, have, we have exactly the same fun. I mean, I've obviously seen uh, all the scripts for, for the season we're shooting now, but I mean, I have no idea what's going there. They're, they're not finished. They, they, they can't be. They're, I'm sure they have their outlines and, and they know what's uh, essentially the map of what's going to happen, but, but certainly the episodes aren't written yet. Well, he was chosen, um, I mean, technically. See, we can, we can get into those arguments because as far as I'm concerned, I had to defend Stannis when he was still alive. And they were saying, well, he shouldn't be king. I said, yes, he should be king. It shouldn't be Joffrey because he's not the son of Robert Baratheon. Uh, so the next in line, so legally or monar monarchically, if that's the word, it should have been Stannis that was second. But I, had my, I was sitting in bars having arguments with people saying, please, Stannis, of course it's Stannis, I'm doing this. No, I need to switch off. Uh, I've been, I defend him on and off the screen. Um, technically, of course, Jon Snow is a bastard and shouldn't, but shouldn't uh, uh, be entitled to be there. Um, however, some people would say that about Trump. He shouldn't be there either. <laughs> he wasn't a public figure, but he is. <laughs> be careful. Yes, of course. He's trying to get dangerous ground. 